Hi everyone. In this course, we're going to discuss choosing which inkjet print head is the right one for your application. There's a lot of different options for inkjet print heads on the market of all different shapes, sizes, features, functionality. So we're going to narrow down the design and technical considerations that we think are important for helping you decide which print head to choose. We're not going to discuss a particular printhead model or manufacturer that you should choose for your application, rather the general concepts to help you make the right decision. These are the seven uh, criteria that we think are some of the most important ones that should go into that decision. Uh, so we'll just get started right with the top and work our way down. So we're going to start with the target resolution uh, that your application calls for. So each print head on the market uh, has a native resolution that's specified by the manufacturer. It's measured in DPI or uh, dots per inch, sometimes NPI, nozzles per inch. Uh, most print heads on the market uh, for industrial inkjet fall in the range of somewhere from 300 to 1200 uh, DPI. You can see the image uh, here is from a Dymatic Starfire SG1024 print head. There are eight different rows of nozzles. Each of the rows is 50 DPI, so 50 nozzles uh, per inch. And each row is slightly offset from each other. So when you add up all those eight rows slightly offset, the overall DPI of the head is 400. So to decide what resolution your application actually calls for, there's a couple of things that go into that. The first is the size of the feature that you're trying to print. So an ideal print is where all of the drops out of the nozzles are barely touching each other. So they're well aligned and just have one side touching. Uh, so the higher the resolution, the smaller the drop sizes are going to have to be. So you're not going to find a really low resolution print head with the nozzles spaced quite far out with really small drops because then the ink wouldn't be able to completely cover the surface. Uh, so one consideration for which print head you should use and which resolution you need is the size of the features that you want to print. So really small features on a circuit board require really small drops and therefore a higher resolution compared to something like uh, flooring where you just want to cover a large area. You don't really need really, really fine features. Another consideration into deciding the resolution that you need is the viewing distance if you're printing something that is uh, displayed. So this is a chart for uh, televisions uh, dis deciding what resolution you need for a TV, but it, the concept holds true for printing as well. So as you can see that the further the viewing distance, which is on the left axis there, the lower resolution you can get away with because you can't really tell the difference anyway. Um, so if you're printing a billboard, for example, you don't need 1200 DPI um, because you can't even tell the difference really between that and 72 DPI and the 1200 tends to be more expensive to produce. So viewing distance and apparent resolution at that distance also matter. The final consideration for resolution is the actual substrate that you're printing on. So the absorbency and the wettability of that substrate matter because that's going to determine what happens to the drops when they hit the surface. Um, if it's a really wettable absorbent surface all the drops might blend together and change their positions anyway so some of that higher DPI advantage is lost. Um, so again, the difference between a 300 DPI and a 1200 DPI is much more apparent on photo paper than something like a t-shirt. So the next consideration is the shape of the print head itself. All the different print heads on the market 
Uh, they have many different options for sizes as well as shapes. And some of them are geared towards one application over another. So the first thing we should think about when we think about shape is the width of the printhead. So in general, from a system design standpoint, it's easier to use as few print heads as possible to cover the total print width that you need. Uh, fewer heads means fewer driver electronics, fewer ink supplies, less time spent with aligning all of these print heads. Um, so as you can see in our diagram here, the print head, the green print head on the right is probably going to be easier to design a system around for this application rather than using two of the gray print head on the left. Um, you also don't really want too wide of a print head though because the print heads tend to be priced per nozzle almost so you don't really want to be paying for more nozzles than you need. In addition to the width you also want to consider how thick the print head is as well if you're printing an application like direct to shape for example. As you can see here, the thicker the print head is, the more variation there is in the distance that the drops are gonna have to travel. The green print head here, the drops are all traveling the same distance, which is helpful because there's less variation in the position of the drops uh, over time. If some of the drops are traveling a really far distance, and some of the drops on a different part of the head are traveling a really short distance, you might see a substantial difference in the resolution, how much they spread, the number of satellites uh, from one spot to the next. So narrower print heads tend to be better suited for this type of application. The shape of the print head itself also has uh, something to do with how easy it is to design a system that uses multiple print heads. So if you are gonna print a really wide image that's wider than one print head, uh, there's really no way around it that you're gonna either have to use multiple print heads or multiple passes. Uh, so stitching these print heads together to get all of those swaths lined up well is a uh, important consideration because that's a, it's a design and a maintenance uh, challenge having to deal with more of these heads uh, that need to be aligned. Um, so with a some print heads, it requires the user to build a mount that positions them all together uh, in their proper position. There are some print heads on the market that are designed to be stitched together. So as you can see these here, um, the print heads are built so that they can all clip together and form really wide arrays. Uh, so that takes the alignment out of the question. The number of colors that you're going to be printing is also important to think about. Uh, if there are one color, two color, four color print heads on the market, uh, so it's nice if you can match the number of colors on the head to the number of colors that you're going to print. Uh, certainly you can use multiple one color heads uh, for CMYK, but you do have to worry about aligning all of those heads together to make sure that the image comes out right. Uh, so if you can get away with it, it is easier to use a multiple color head where all the rows are guaranteed to be aligned uh, properly. The material that you're printing also needs to align with the print head that you want to use. Um, the print heads are generally labeled as working with kind of broad categories of ink. So common ones might be UV inks, aqueous inks, uh, solvent inks, oil uh, is another one. So the print heads are labeled with as working with one or more types of these fluids. So you can use that as kind of a quick filter uh, to get some of the heads 
into the consideration and filter the rest of them out. Uh, but even amongst uh, all the print heads in the same category, they're not necessarily the same. So all UV print heads might not work with the same exact fluids. So even once you've decided on the category of print head, it's probably a good idea to either reach out to the manufacturer uh, to test your ink uh, with their print head or to get a materials compatibility kit for that head where they'll send you all the materials that go into making the head and you can test uh, how well your ink interacts with those. The speed at which you're trying to print, uh, so the speed of the substrate, is also important for determining the print heads because some print heads are uh, can travel at high or handle higher frequencies uh, of jetting than other ones. To determine the frequency that you need, uh, you take the print speed and multi multiply it by the print resolution, and that will tell you the jetting frequency that you need in terms of the number of drops per second coming out of each nozzle. Um, most print heads in industrial inkjet print heads are somewhere between 20,000 and 100,000 drops per second out of each nozzle. So if you take your print resolution and uh, take that frequency, you can kind of calculate backwards what speed that would be able to produce for your process. Uh, one thing that's important to remember about the frequency that's specified for each head is it tends to be specified for small uh, binary drops, so only one gray level. So in the case of this print head, the manufacturer would spec this print head at 50 kilohertz because that's what it can produce uh, binary drops at. If you're trying to print grayscale, uh, the maximum frequency that this head could produce might only be 30 kilohertz. So it's important to keep in mind that manufacturers tend to spec the heads for a binary waveform. The true maximum frequency might be different depending on which drop size you're trying to use. If you run that calculation and you determine that you need to print at a frequency that's higher than any print head can handle, uh, that's a situation where you could benefit from using multiple heads, uh, you know, in a row. So in the case of, let's say you need 150,000 drops per second to cover the area that you need, uh, you can try to find a print head that can go 150,000 drops per second, or you could stack three fifties in a row. And if you align them properly, properly, it will have the same effect. Again, with alignment and ink supplies and drive electronics, you do want to try to minimize the number of heads uh, that you're using. But in some cases, if you're trying to go really, really fast, uh, this is the only way to do it. Something else that isn't necessarily always advertised about print heads by the manufacturer is how flexible they are or how easy is it to design a system around that. So that's another consideration that we've listed here. Uh, the first element of this is whether or not the print head is serviceable. Uh, so if you're dealing with um, any sort of complex fluid, there's a pretty good likelihood that you'll have to either clean the print heads over time or perhaps they'll even be clogged. So whether or not you can clean the print heads yourself, whether you can replace parts on the print head yourself, or if you can send it to the manufacturer is possibly advantageous versus having to just throw out the print head and use a completely new one, uh, depending on how often you have to do that service. So that's something to keep in mind. Another element of flexibility is whether or not you have control in designing the waveforms for the print heads. Some manufacturers give you full waveform control where you don't have any restrictions on the edits that you can make. Um, some print head manufacturers are at the other end of the spectrum where the manufacturer 
handles all of the waveforms and the end user doesn't really interface with that aspect of the head. Um, we have a course, uh, lesson one, talks a little bit more about how to actually control these waveforms, what they do, and how they optimize them. And based on your application, it might be advantageous to do the waveforms yourself, or it might be advantageous to have the manufacturer do them for you. It just depends on your goals uh, as a company and what you want to be responsible for in the system. And then, of course, the last consideration between print heads is the cost. So in addition to the cost per print head, there's also kind of sneaky costs that you wouldn't necessarily uh, think about until you've actually tried to build the system. And that would be the number of print heads that you need, the cost of the drive electronics. So... Um, if you need more print heads, in addition to needing more print heads, you also need more drivers. Uh, so that cost sometimes can be forgotten. And then also for some print heads on the market, you can get drivers from many different companies. Uh, for other print heads, you might only have one option. So just the cost and availability of the drive electronics is something to consider. Same is true for the ink supplies. So the more print heads, uh, the more colors, the more ink supplies that you'll need. And the cost associated to that should be considered. And finally, the cost of maintenance. So whether or not you can repair any print heads yourself, whether or not you have to spend a lot of time aligning all the different print heads when you put them into a system, um, or whether they're print heads that are designed to be easily brought in and out without having to spend a ton of time doing that. Those are some of the costs that, you know, not don't necessarily come to mind early in the decision. Uh, so that's something important to remember. Those are some of the biggest considerations that we think um, would be helpful for evaluating different print heads. If you have any other questions or you're trying to decide between different print heads and want to hear our opinion on that, um, you can reach out to us at info at imageexpert.com and we would be happy to help.